Greetings and welcome to another friendly debate here at Words About Games. I'm Amy. I am joined by my constant debate partner. You're actually over here because my camera is reversed. And I still haven't figured out how to unreverse it. Keith Robinson. <sighs> yeah. Welcome ooh, ooh, to the ooh. quarantine edition. Oh. Fight, 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 fight. <laughs> I got you now. I got you now. Ha <laughs> ha. At least you know I can't run over at your house and stab you, which I'm trying to do. Two meters away. <laughs> like I've, I have to, I have to throw the screwdriver, and I don't know if I can throw it with the the acceptable force to where it would even penetrate your skin. I might bruise you slightly, but <laughs> all you have to do to avoid that is not answer the door. So <laughs> I feel like this quarantine has blunted my argument somewhat. Already, I'm at disadvantage. <laughs> Without the threat of physical violence, Amy feels less confident. In her. <laughs> it's almost like that was my that was my go to like nuclear option. It was like, look, yeah. you make me want to cry, I want to stab you. Those are our two last resorts. <laughs> <laughs> like they're different, but they both get the same results. <laughs> This is friendly debate. Every week, month, whenever we manage to find the time to sit down and record one of these friendly debates, we make a top five or a top ten list based on a specific topic that we've chosen in advance. This episode's topic is top five underrated and underappreciated games. I had to expand it a little bit because, you know, underrated. Taken literally. Create some interesting problems. <laughs> For a topic. How it works is Keith has submitted a list, I have submitted a list, I have mashed those two lists together. We are gonna debate until we only have five entries left on that list. Once we have that, then we are gonna make a top five. We're gonna do the entire thing based on debate and discourse and being reasonable and mostly not stabbing and crying. It's all good. Mostly. There's a there'll be a little bit because we're both heels when we do this. We play we, we, we play things up slightly, shall we say. How it works is we're gonna take turns nominating a game to be cut, then the other person has to argue to keep the game or can just concede. And then whether it's up to whether the whether the game gets kept is up to the person who originally decided it'd be cut. The idea is the arguments and the debates that we have influence the other person. It's all good. I couldn't do this with anybody else because nobody else listens to me. <laughs> you barely listen to me. But just enough so that we can actually make this a viable video series. This is the 13th episode, so it must be viable at this point. So, with my with our newfound upgraded 2020 friendly debates video production, which is just me opening a document and showing it on screen, but Keith can't see it. <laughs> I'm going to show you the list. Boom. This is the list of games we are going to be arguing that are our top five most underrated games. And they are in alphabetical order. Anti-Chamber, Battle Chasers Night War, Dragon Age 2, Dragon Force, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. I know what you're thinking. It, um, there's a bet on the line here. That's all I'm going to say. Mass Effect Andromeda. Monster Prom, Never Alone, Parasite Eve 2, Pong, Sea of Thieves, Spec Ops The Line, Sunset Overdrive, Tetris, Titanfall 2, and Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine. By the end of this video, we will have five of those games organized into a nice list that you can disagree with. <laughs> However, do not take these lists too seriously, because we aren't. Should we just dive right in? I feel like I didn't miss anything. For once. <laughs> in that intro. I feel like I got everything. Uh, at some point you did, later on, you're just like, oh no, I forgot to mention. I mean, the rules change once we get to the top five, but I'll talk about that when we get there. Indeed. For now, as is customary on Friendly Debates, I give Keith the first swing. So, dead air. <laughs> uh, I like my chances. <laughs> Amy, 
let's start with one which a lot of people be going really is an underappreciated game i mean breath of the wild i mean oh i can't prepare for this <laughs> yeah should i give the backstory before or after i make yeah. my make my argument the backstory you go first so the backstory is we were talking about this on a live stream Myself, Keith, and Mr. Moody, who you might know if you watch our podcasts or watch our live streams, we were we were talking about this while we were arranging the video recording. And what happened was I was like I'd like I as we were explaining the concept of top five underrated games, what I said was you can have any game you want on there. And I use Breath of the Wild as the example to say, if you think you can make an argument that Breath of the Wild, one of the most highly rated and reviewed games of all time, if you think you can make that argument that it's actually underrated, you go for it. <laughs> because of the way this show works, like that argument will be taken into consideration. To which Moody said, I will pay you £5 a month <laughs> for the rest of the year if you attempt to make that argument. To which I said, cool, I'll take that bet. <laughs> <Yeah>. So, automatically, <laughs> so far... He now owes you five pounds. He now owes me five pounds per month. Apparently, there's a bonus in it if I can get it into the top five, but I'm not optimistic that I'm going to be able to carry it that far. But I didn't, I didn't cheap out on this. I didn't just go, "Hey, I did it, Moody. You owe me money." I read, <laughs> I've read about fifty reviews. I have scrolled through Twitter. I have gone through Reddit. I have gone through forum posts just to see what everybody has been saying about Breath of the Wild. When it came out, and for the last three years, because it's three years old, and well, here's here's my case. Take it or leave it. So first of all, reasons why Breath of the Wild is awesome, because it is awesome. But the, the, these are recognized reasons. I just want to get them out of the way. The world feels real, and it's lived in. It looks amazing. It adapts some of the best parts of Legend of past Legend of Zelda games. And it reinvents the entire series, so it feels different than any other Legend of Zelda game that comes before it. Reasons why it is underrated. <laughs> Reasons why Legend of the Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild is underrated. And if it feels like I'm grasping at straws at any point during this, that's because I am grasping at straws. <laughs> its soundtrack. I wrote this down. Its soundtrack doesn't get enough praise. The subtly different classic Zelda themes are present, which is some of the most iconic music of all time, despite what some people here might think. And no one talks enough about how fantastic it is. That was number one. I'm not done. I mentioned this, but I wanted to expand upon it. It quietly reinvents the open world, binning the overwhelming tidal wave of pointless activities and map icons that flood the maps of games like Assassin's Creed or Far Cry in favour of letting you explore and find things on your own, which makes the world feel rich, dynamic, and interesting, and I hope it inspires open world games for the next decade. People who enjoy hating on things because they're popular have flooded social media with how they actually hate the game, despite the fact that it is actually great. Its Metacritic user score is only an 8.6, <laughs> which is a lot lower than its critical score, which tells me, having looked at the chart, I went and when I clicked it, and I looked at the, I went through the most recent reviews, and it, it's a user score that's been going down since 2017. Mm -hmm. There's a tidal wave of negative opinion coming for this game. Almost like it's cool to hate things that are popular. Also, there were two outlets that gave it a six. I don't... That's... That... No. 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 Two outlets out of... How many? I don't know. I lost count. <laughs> critical reviews. And what, 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 what percentage was it given out of 100%? 97. Yes. 97 <laughs> out of 100%. <laughs> not the... But it's not the most critically acclaimed game on Metacritic. And that is a crime. Are you saying that Legend of Breath of the Wild, irrespective of any bet you have made with Moody, is the best game of all time ever? No other game can like come close to the perfection which is this game. There is nothing that will ever be or ever will be better than Breath of the Wild, irrespective of your bet. <laughs> I am saying 
for the purposes of the topic of this episode. <laughs> <laughs> that I believe that The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is underrated. Not by much. <laughs> <laughs> but that is the argument with which I have presented. I think the music doesn't get enough credit. I think the way it's open world works doesn't get enough credit. I think people slam on it too much. I actually do think that. <laughs> like... Counterpoint. Um, people, when it came out, who even dared suggest that it was less than 100% got death threats. Did they? I noticed. Really? I seem to remember you linking me a Jim Sterling video. Did I? About the topic. <laughs> I, I mean, I have vague recollections of, of that kind of thing happening. Like, yeah. Craig's who p- p- perhaps maybe even sitting on this video who didn't praise it all yeah. nonstop might have received some level of, of backlash. But that's really and neither here nor there. That backlash, you have changed your mind. So what you're saying here, it is... If I agree that it's an underrated game, it is okay to send death threats to reviewers to get a game that you like to have a higher score. No. <laughs> what am I arguing with a fucking Twitter thread all of a sudden? Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's what you're saying is right. <laughs> oh my God. This was a mistake. Friendly debate was a mistake. The whole thing's cancelled. <laughs> Obviously not, you idiot. <laughs> Seriously, though. I I just, just wanted to hang a hand up, like little lantern on that um thing where you say it's like, oh be like it, it's a tidal wave of hate could come from this game. It's like I do remember like when it initially came out, if you posted any negative reaction, it was taken very, very uh badly by a certain part of the community. Indeed. So I disagree with that point. As for the soundtrack, um, I, I do remember that because you got me to, I got you to drop the soundtrack in our like first, the first soundtrack that we dropped. I'm still not over that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can see that you're not over that. Um, Neither are people who watch that video, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Um, I never said that it's not a good soundtrack. I have. Seen very few reviews about Legend of Zelda, <laughs> but one of the ones that I have seen. Um, sorry, two, sorry, yes. sorry. One out of how many? I'm flipping. I'm flipping the the thing that you said back to back to me. One one review you seen out of a hundred and nine, I believe you said it was. No, three is the number of seen. Three out of a hundred and nine. Like, let me just. And like, and one of those reviews was kind of. Um, well, the person's not sitting up like uh, <laughs> very far from me. I, I don't think I mentioned the music when I reviewed it because I was talking about the other stuff. Yeah, but um, I have heard people um, go on about the music and how it like reinvents classic Zelda tunes. I mean, if we go off what I've heard, like I've heard every possible opinion about Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild because... I've been on the internet for three years. <laughs> I've also heard every possible opinion about most of the games on this list. Yeah, and I would be well, a star raving schizophrenic if I tried to present them all in one <laughs> argument. <laughs> this is why we have like two people, so we can find different sides of the argument. That said, um, there's a lot of games that on this list which have quite a good Metacritic score. Oh yeah, we didn't base this off of Metacritic score at all. Yeah, um, and I rarely use Metacritic scores at all, but for this one, I had to use, I had to look at Metacritic and stuff. Um, Same. And I just can't see Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild, the most critically acclaimed game of 2017, and for some people, this decade, um, for Nintendo, like, and like most people would say, for Nintendo for this generation. I mean, Um, yeah, I'll agree with you with most people, but what I do want to point out is Moody tweeted this out last night, and the first reply to the tweet was someone going, it wasn't even the best Nintendo Switch game of 2017, and I was just like, thank you for proving my point that I'm supposed to try and make (laughs) tomorrow, I guess. (laughs) Yeah, um, I really don't think that this deserves to be on this list. It doesn't, doesn't deserve to be on the list of underrated games. 
it deserves to be in the list of like best games of the decade. But it wasn't, weirdly enough. That's weird. <laughs> and that just because it didn't, didn't, didn't appear on our list of, you know, our best games of the decade doesn't mean that it's underrated. It's just to kind of <laughs> knock that off. No, no. I tried. You can't say I didn't give it a try, though. No, no, you, you, you did. You did try. I tried harder than I think most people who are aware of this would yeah. have expected. And however, actual game. however, I'd have done it for free, but it's too late now. The, 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 the deal, the bet has been made. It's on Twitch. But while we're talking about stuff like, you know, things that deserve to be on lists of best games, stuff like that. I want to turn this over because now it's my turn to cut something. Yeah. I'm going to turn this over to the best selling game of all time. The game that most that like most people in the world have probably played at some point. And I'd say everybody like like ninety percent of the population of the planet might have heard of at least once. Why why is Tetris an underrated game? Right, so somehow okay, how is Tetris an underrated <laughs> game? <laughs> How many people do you reckon would go, Tetris, that's an awesome game? <laughs> like, okay, counterpoint to that. How yeah. many people who would never in a million years even think that they could use YouTube to watch a video like this think, Tetris, that's an awesome game? <laughs> <laughs> I've got that on my phone. Yeah. Um, well, that's one of the things why I think it's kind of underrated. I mean, the premise of Tetris is so incredibly basic and simple. It's like match three. But I couldn't think of I couldn't think of the first match three game. It's a geometric puzzle game, which not only took the world by such a storm when it was released that you know some American centers were claiming it was the Red Menace's attempt to destroy the youth of America. Um, it, it, it's endured. I mean, the Tetris effect is apparently one of the most beautiful and relaxing games that you could ever play. Um, the VR version is meant to be... Um, I don't I can't think of words to describe <clears throat> um, how people have this, uh, like, explained it to me, but it is such a calming, relaxing sort of zen experience. Um, and yet it holds too to the basic precepts of Terrace. They made a Battle Royale version of Terrace. I did, and it was one of the most popular downloads on Switch Online last year. Indeed. And yet, when normally people dress up like a list of games where it's like, oh, these are amazing games, or these are the best games of whatever year and stuff, the very idea of Tetris getting any sort of acknowledgement would get a laugh. So basically, Tetris is on here just to go, you don't, that you don't need to be a million like dollar like production thing. You don't need you know, like amazing voiceovers by like stars. You don't need like the world's best graphics, although that Tetris effect looks amazing. Um, it, the pre just the premise of a game alone, just the game mechanics itself can be so amazing that playing it on a Nokia phone or playing it on an X or on a PlayStation with all these graphics and these whales going past in the background and all this cool music on a VR headset, it's still an it's still an engaging experience which draws you in. That's kind of why that's why Tetris is on here. It's I I'm not saying that it's been called a bad game. I'm just saying people don't. No, no. no. some of these games have, but the game <laughs> okay. I did a Google, <laughs> yeah. based on what one of the things that you said. I'm just going to read some some headlines. The the first entry that comes up is list of best selling video games. Yes, yeah. <laughs> it's like in twenty four <clears throat> in twenty fourteen the the CEO of the Tetris company said that it's it had been download downloaded on mobiles four hundred twenty five million times, which automatically makes it the best selling video game of of all time. Yeah. Probably for the next 30 years. Um, and then here's some more. Here's why Tetris is the best game ever. Tetris, the most addicting game ever. Soapbox, my love affair with Tetris, probably the best video game ever created. <clears throat> why Tetris is the most important video game ever made. Time's top 50 best video games of all time. 
Uh, something about Minecraft. Games of the decade. Tetris Effect is the game of all decades. Uh, the best N64 games of all time. I guess that was a Tetris game on N64. Uh, then there's an Amazon link to buy Tetris Effect for PS4. Like, that doesn't count, but... I, you know. <laughs> Uh, the best games of 2019, uh, the best Game Boy games of all time, and then there's there's an entire category, it turns out, on Amazon.com. Um, Minecraft has sold 176 million copies, apparently. <laughs> Tetris obviously got mentioned in that article at some point. Yeah. Uh, 20 most popular video games of all time, 5 most popular video games ever, top games in the Hall of Fame shortlist. <laughs> I'm going to stop. Yeah. It's definitely not underrated. <laughs> I'm going off to perception here. This is what I was going. Um, I mean, I'm fine, you know, that if it gets cut. Oh, it's getting cut. <laughs> people, people don't... There's a lot of people that would, that wouldn't even consider it a real video game. Those people... Are, uh, those are probably the same people that think Fire Emblem is for casuals. Mario is for casuals. That you have to get good. If you're not playing Dark Souls, you're not a real video gamer. Yeah. And we don't listen to those people. Because they're stupid. Uh, what was it? Alt, Shift, Fan. Google Docs has got some weird keyboard shortcuts. <laughs> and no button shortcut for strike throughs. Alright, so I think we've cut the two most glaringly yeah. obvious games. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now we actually get into the weeds of this thing. <laughs> yeah. We're into the trees now. So <laughs> They're not in the trees. They are the trees. Um Amy. Keith. Why do you think Antichamber is an underrated game? Because no one's heard of it. And that sucks. You guys have heard of it because I never shut up about games I really love. But yeah. <laughs> that's just yeah. a fact. <laughs> but like you ask anyone, like he my favourite puzzle game of all time. Anti Chamber. You keep it portal. Portal is a fantastically designed game. Portal 2 is also a fantastically designed game. Well, although it's a bit over designed in my opinion. But at a time when everyone was raving about Portal like Antichamber came out and I was like this it doesn't have fancy gameplay mechanics not in terms of what you would think of a puzzle game like Portal yeah. or Half-Life let's say with the gravity gun and whatnot. it just makes you think about the way in which you play a video game where it's like you can you get through a puzzle by walking into a room staring at an eye and walking backwards out of it which will get you into a different room like, that's how you solve that puzzle. So it teaches you to solve puzzles. Like, after you solve them. Like, you've got to figure out the way in which the puzzles are solved. Like, first. And then afterwards, it kind of tells you what you did. Um, but it's the it's the how creative the different puzzles are solved. Like, the, the puzzle solutions are, like, really creative. Because they don't rely on gameplay mechanics. So much as they just rely on, like... It's almost the opposite. It's like how you play a game will not get like if you play a fir if you play any chamber the way you play any normal first person game you're probably not going to solve very many puzzles it forces you to think outside the box and at the time when it came out like there weren't very many games that kind of forced you to consider how you even approach a video game in the way in which you want to solve the puzzles in the video game and that's why i believe it is underrated Good luck trying to, to reassemble that argument because, <laughs> like, because like, yeah, good. I I don't know if 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 you even I don't remember what I said at the beginning of it at this point. <laughs> yeah, we've been interrupted four times trying trying to get this one anti chamber thing done. Yeah, so I think the best thing to do here is just move along to the next pick uh, and we'll come back anti-chamber if we need <laughs> sorry because I think the crash got a circle in again oh, but I'm not letting it stop us now I'm just going to fucking I mean plug how plug. much crash is outside the back of your house not very much not very much this is what I was about. This is, this is what I was complaining about <laughs> obviously that won't be in this video yeah. but um, I guess it's my turn to pick a game that needs to be cut um, and all semblance of thought has been blasted out of my head um, 
let's have a look. Let's do this thing, because I need this just as much as anybody else needs it. So it top five underrated and underappreciated games. And I'm looking at the list of games that we have left. Anti-Chamber, Battle Chasers, Night War, Dragon Age 2, Dragon Force, Mass Effect Andromeda, Monster Prom, Never Alone, Parasite Eve 2, Pong, Sea of Thieves, Spec Ops The Line, Sunset Overdrive, Titanfall 2, and Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine. I'm going to change God, tune, my tune, like tune a little bit. I know we've only cut two games and try to cut a third one. Um, but I'm going to... I'm going to go for Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine. Not because I think it's better or worse than its reception. Here comes the grass cutter again. I apologize for anyone trying to listen to this video. Um, but because I think it's exactly, it's rated exactly right. <laughs> for what it was. You think that it deserved a 76 on Metacritic? I mean, bang on average game. Yeah, yeah, I'd say so. I mean, for those that have watched um, the many World of Alpine podcasts that we were on and some of the um, live streams that we've done, we'll know that there was a place in My Name is Heart for the Xbox 360 game known as Space Marines. Um, yeah, for one reason. Not for the yeah. gameplay or the story or the presentation. For one oh, reason, the story, the story was something that was like I, I was literally listening to you playing the campaign at one point, and you were a little behind me, and I knew what was happening. It's like, oh yeah, I'm just going to point to record a psychic scourge at a space elevator. Sure, <laughs> that's going to end well. You realize that that was sarcasm. <laughs> yeah. my, com my comment on the story was not positive. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. Continue. Yeah. So, um, I mean, you say it's got like 76, but the average score for across the three platforms it was on is like 73? Yeah, it was like PC. It was or PS, PS3. It was like a 70. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was probably, it was the first game that really got me into actually playing multiplayer because I'm a dirty, filthy casual. Um, it... Well, I don't think it was as black as it was painted. You had you had a lot of um, bad things to say about the story back I in did. the day. Yeah, um, but it, it it the the story is basically holding very true to the source material, and the source material, especially back then, was not the. Um, it didn't. It's never really had the great depth and colour that many of our like, franchises have. It played very much to what it was supposed to be and let you have a lot of fun playing as a space screen as opposed to what a lot of the other 40k games had done before that, which was basically this is very much an adaptation of the board like game for like Space Hulk, where you just move nameless terminators around the board or you play Command and Conquer style, like strategy style. Um, I mean, does it deserve to be much higher than like a seven? Does it deserve to be higher than a seventy-six? No, probably not on Metacritic. No, but I think it gets tarred a bit, a tarred and feathered a bit more than it should, um, especially by us for the repetitive uh, voice dialogue from the Orcs. Um, even though it's great to hear so many British accents, uh, like genuine British accents, uh, in the video game. I mean, uh, most of the orcs have a sort of um, Mancunian accent. I mean, if we use if if we're using that as a yardstick of game quality, Fable, the Fable series is one of the greatest series of all time. <laughs> Which is not. I'm not going to even attempt that one. No. Not even if Moody bribes me, am I going to win? Would I attempt that? No. Um, but yeah, I'm happy with it to be cut. I just thought, given how much we've riffed on it with the Space Marines. Um, it's a term just of a little bit of a... Hmm? It's a term of endearment. Yeah. Space Marine. And what I say about real British accents is I the whole sort of very sort of upper class sort of like accent that we see, like gentlemen using video games and stuff, which doesn't exist outside see, of like... 
one percent is in Cambridge. I was about to say, it. at least you've adapted that that argument because you used to say it didn't exist, and I kept trying to tell you I've legitimately met people who have that accent. <laughs> I did. Yeah, I'll tell you when I changed my thing when I discovered Jacob Rees Mogg wasn't a political satire and was an actual person. That is when I realized that accent existed. Like that accent really does exist. People like this don't actually. Oh my god. Oh my god, they do. It's crazy. But yeah, no, I, I just, I, like I said, I mean, I'm probably going to cut it, like, yeah. Because again, I feel like it is, it is, it isn't underrated, it isn't overrated, it's rated correctly. I feel like, and yeah, sure, we do make jokes about it from time to time. Um, but at least we're still talking about it, <laughs> which I imagine is not true for almost everybody else in yeah. gaming. <laughs> probably doesn't even remember this game. Yeah. Um, but yeah, cool. So we got that rid of that one. Now let now let's see if you can cut something <laughs> without us getting interrupted sixteen times. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna hit one of your passionate games because passionate. I know you do feel passionately about this game. So passionately, in fact, that you named your fantasy game league after it. So tell me, why do you think Sea of Thieves is an underrated game? I mean, you were there, like. <clears throat> there aren't that many games on this list where you, where we can both because a lot of them are older than like the last five years, so they're not that many games on the list where we can say we were podcasting and making YouTube and Twitch videos during the launch of this game, but we were yeah. doing that during the launch of this game. So you were there, and we it, reenacted the scene from Titanic. We, we reenacted the scene from Titanic as the orchestra. Um, yeah. at the end of the beta because we felt like that was appropriate to a bit appropriate way to end the beta like yeah. you know like i've spent considerable time and energy and words talking about sea of thieves since it came out i wasn't allowed to talk about it before it came out because i was in the founders yeah. whatever for like <laughs> a year and a half before the game came out so i spent it everybody was talking about sea of thieves oh this looks like it might be quite good and i was like <laughs> I've been playing it but you were there when it came out you saw the there was a lot of negativity around Sea of Thieves when it first came out and whether it was justified or not it was a lot <laughs> like it was a lot I was going on my Xbox and me and people were just non-stop complaining about this game like months later people were still talking about oh, Sea of Thieves and I'm not just talking about PlayStation fanboys. Like, there was just a lot of people being really negative about the game. Meanwhile, <laughs> like, here, in this very room, I'm sitting here like, I just log in to see if these every now and again. And I was playing it with Kirsty, with Mark, with my friend Tori. And I was like, and when it got to the end of 2018, and I was like, game of the year. And I was like, okay, cool, I'm making a list. And I, I looked at Sea of Thieves like on that list and I was like hang on a minute I've never had a bad experience with this game like I've played this game on and off for nine yeah. months and I've never not had fun and I hadn't played it for like six months to that point so I was like fuck it re-downloaded it message casting I was like look I want to play Sea of Thieves do you want to play Sea of Thieves hell yeah so we went in we played Sea of Thieves I had a blast we played for like four hours <laughs> And I was like, no, no, this game is definitely really good. And obviously it's improved since then. Like, there's a lot of people who aren't going to give it the time of day ever again based on how it launched. Yeah. Um, it didn't have that much content in it. But you know what it did have? Good times. You can't tell me <laughs> that all those times, because we all played the beta and we played for a month afterwards because everybody bought Game Pass. Um to play Sea of Thieves because we were like, let's all play together. Hey, you can't tell me we didn't have fun when we played that game. We didn't was, stop because we weren't having fun. <laughs> there was um, fun had. Um, we all lamented the lack of content um, in the game. Um, Make your own fun. Yeah. That's what I say. Because not all games need to have progression meters. And do you remember we used to play games that didn't have battle passes? And we just used to play them because they were fun games. Yeah, I've only just started playing a game where it does have one. Yeah, where it's like, oh, I've leveled up because I've played the game. That means I get this reward. 
We used to play Perfect Dark. We didn't get rewards. It was like, oh, play Perfect Dark. Why? Because it's fun. I play Sea of Thieves. Why? Because it's fun. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was fun to play. It was very um, repetitive. It was a game you had to have a couple of friends with you. Oh, 100%. Don't play this game by yourself. But then it's a multiplayer game. You, so. <laughs> yeah. Um, even yeah, it's like I, I think sometimes even if it's like two people. Nah, because I remember no, when we used, we played a couple of times. Because you need to be like, I'm with this person. Wait, where's someone? At, where was the other person gone? You need that sort of moment of. You need to not know what everyone else is doing. Because that's when the fun comes in. Oh, 100%. Like, Wait, where's Russell? Boom. Boosh. You missed the island. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, when it was just the two of us, we still had fun. Like, I'm just talking about me and you, not like me and other people. Where it was like, hey, what, do you think we could like fire ourselves up on the very peak of this? Because there was that island that had a boat stuck to the top of it. And we were like, let's see if we can hit it with the cannons. And then I fired myself up and landed on it. And you went, oh, cool, I'll come up and join you. Do you remember what happened next? I missed you got in the cannon, which was still pointed in exactly the same direction, and fired yourself. And then I just waited for you to go, and you just shot past. Yeah. That wasn't. That's not a quest. That's not a challenge. That's not an achievement. That was just. Hey, what if we could try and do this thing? And we did. And it was hilarious. I fired myself at a skeleton ship across an island and landed on it. Didn't end well, but I pulled it <laughs> off. <laughs> I was like, don't worry, I'll board them. <laughs> oh my god, I made it. <laughs> so yeah, I think that it gets a lot of shit. And that's the reason my fantasy game league team is called Sea of Thieves was good, actually. Because it annoys me that it gets shit and it still gets shit. Because I'm not getting I'm not out here like my fantasy game league team doesn't team name isn't Sea of Thieves was actually game of the year, because it wasn't. Not even close. Like, it it was good, though. And, I, like, it got a lot of undeserved shit. That's my... Yeah, I mean, when it came out, it kind of deserved the whole, like, thing of there isn't any real content here. There um, is. Because... There was. There's a lack of content. A lack of content and no content are two very different things. Yeah. Does it deserve a 66 on Open Critic? Hell no. <laughs> it's better for starters. It 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 is more enjoyable than Bleeding Edge, <laughs> which is a comparison I've just been able to make by opening Open Craig to check what the score was. Yeah. Fair enough. I mean, I, I'm looking at some of these other games on the list, and I'm thinking, e yeah. I mean, we'll knock on it for the minute, and then. Um, we have to come back because we're going to have too many games. We'll see. <clears throat> Keith. Yep. We need to put this to rest once and for all because I'm getting fucking sick of this. This is a word. If if there was a words about games meme, <laughs> I, feel, I feel like this would be it. Right? Yeah. Dragon Age fucking 2. Okay. I didn't like it. Right? <laughs> No, and I was didn't. very vocal about not liking it for very specific reasons, which I could get into if you want. But I don't necessarily have to. Yeah. Just because I vocally didn't like the game <laughs> does not mean that it was underrated. It only got a 79. It was more, one of the best Dragon Ages. More people... Like, there's only three. More people liked this game <laughs> than did not like this game. And it got an 82 on PC. For some reason, when I've typed it in, it's not come up. Um... Dragon Age 2 for PC and reviews Metacritic, 82. I mean, it got a user score of 4.6, but who pays attention to user scores? Yeah. I'll probably click on Dragon Age 2. User scores are stupid. Yeah, 79%, yeah. But, um, yeah, it is basically there for the meme of basically how much you hate Dragon Age. I don't. This is what's the this is the problem. <laughs> if you asked me to pick my 100 most disliked games of all time, Dragon Age 2 would not make the list. I didn't hate the game. <laughs> 
And I'm sick of people saying I did. <laughs> it was a big step down from Dragon Age Origins, and Dragon Age Inquisition was a big step up. Like, and I get the reasons behind why Dragon Age 2 did some of the things that it did. That doesn't necessarily negate the fact that it did them. <laughs> Bioware magic? Yeah, Bioware magic. And so, like, it still did those things, and I still criticize the things that it did, but. Yeah, like I don't hate the game, and it, but it is in no way underrated. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I, I'm happy to have that cup again. It's kind of on that that was just there for the, like the meme of you just how many times you've like threatened me with something if I said, "Oh, no, oh, best Bioware games," if, like in you threatening me if I like said Dragon Age Two, you'd come around and throttle me. <clears throat> yeah, for number one. I was like, if you try and get this to number one, I'll fight you. <laughs> Throw hands. Because I knew you didn't believe that. That's why it would have annoyed me. You were just trying to get a rise out of me. And I let you get a rise I mean, out of I, me there. I really like Dragon Age 2. I li- like the whole time-based um, thing but, that it does with like, the city and that. Oh, no. Like I know, I li- Even I liked some of the stuff that was in there. I liked what they tried to do with the story. But you know, you just you go off and you visit the same three hours and over and over again. Yeah. Um. Yeah, like I don't hate the game. If I hated the game, I would probably would have been more passionately vocal about it. But at the end of the day, it was just kind of like a meh. <laughs> Origins, but bad. But yeah. This 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 grass car is still gone. By the way. Like the thing is, it's an like. 500 meters long piece of grass, which is only about 7 meters wide. Yeah, it's a very small field behind my house. It's still there. <laughs> like, there's probably somebody watching it, like watching this at this point who, for the last 25 minutes, has only been able to hear this like dull sort of noise in the back, just in the background, because this microphone picks up a lot more than the other one does. Um, but anyway, Dragon Age 2 is gone. Um, it is your turn to pick a game off of this list to cut one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are Sunset Overdrive. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> you stood on my trap card. <laughs> I just wanted to talk about. I do believe Sunset Overdrive is underrated because like PlayStation fanboys. <laughs> Not anymore because now PlayStation owns Insomniac. I'm sure they're like they love Sunset Overdrive, but mm-hmm. like it was, it was underplayed. Game Pass didn't exist yet, so like Game Pass didn't exist yet, and Xbox has always had an issue with people buying their exclusives like mm-hmm. before Game Pass existed. So not a lot of people played Sunset Overdrive, which is a shame because it is a really really fun game um, that a lot of people missed out on. But at the same time. It's not one of the most underrated games of all time. (laughs) It's in there purely just so I can say, you should play Sunset Overdrive. Because its movement mechanics are are really good. And it's really funny. Um, And some of its meta quests, like there's a late game side quest that you Mm -hmm. pick up from a character where it's like, hey, so I need you to go around to all the, to like a bunch of like the, the previous quest people. Because they haven't handed in their exclamation marks that are above their heads. And you have to go and collect them off of them and give them back. Because they hadn't handed them in yet. <laughs> and that's the kind of game Sunset Overdrive is. It's I really, have, really funny. <laughs> I have seen, spoiler alert, um, something like end of the game where it's like, oh, horror, sacrifice, whatever. <laughs> like the main character goes, what? No, I'm not dying. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's. Uh, is it on Game Pass? I need to check because it was an Xbox Studios game. But obviously with PlayStation buying Insomniac. Yeah. I don't think it is. Um, but it, I think it is, actually. Yeah, included with Game pa- Xbox Game Pass. So if you've got Game Pass, or if you've got fourteen ninety nine, because that's how much the game is, that's not that expensive, Like, and you're looking for something to do during this lockdown, you could do a lot worse than Sunset Overdrive. It's a lot of fun. It comes with the words about games seal of approval. 
which is a which is you know it's a big thing now let's have a look what am i gonna let's bring up the list so we've managed to cut a few games mm-hmm. oh my i mean no they're not literally just got sunset overdrive and legend of zelda breath of the wild at the beginning um legend of zelda was meh <laughs> getting all the way up there. Neither was Tetris. So we've got 11 games left. We still need to cut this down to uh, final five. The games that are left are Anti Chamber, Battle Chasers, Night War, Dragon Force, Mass Effect, Andromeda, Monster Prob, Never Alone, Parasite Eve 2, Pong, Sea of Thieves, Spec Ops The Line, and Titanfall 2. Keith, tell me why Pong is one of the most underrated games of all time. This is a fucking relieving question, but what was the first ever video game? Was it Pong? Yes, it was. <laughs> Pong is the progenitor of all video games. You're not helping your argument, Ian. Yeah. <laughs> and, and despite the fact that, you know, it, someone didn't make 3D Pong um, for yes. the Sega Saturn. Um, I don't think people really, you know... Someone made it for dreams. It. Uh, where like where we came from enough, so it's just kind of on there as a sort of like head nod to the origin of all things. I mean, we've played pong before at some game expo. We also played NBA basketball and tried to remember if we knew what the giant head treat was, which we didn't. Which we didn't. Well, play basketball. Which we didn't know that either. Um, no, I remember I had pong. I had the the paddles and stuff, you know, because it had the paddles with the turning yeah. knobs and stuff. Like, oh no, like. It is the modern progenitor. It is the progenitor of all video games. Like, yeah. And I get that, and you get that. And I imagine most people know what, most people of a certain age and above know what Pong is. And if we're trying to base this list on what is underrated with the, the kids, we're going <coughs> to fail spectacularly. <laughs> Hello, fellow children. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Hello, no. fellow children. Like, my only like main rebuttal to it being any in any way forgotten is like someone made Pong in Dreams within like a few days. Um, someone made Pong in Super Mario Maker too, which was in- impressive. I remember playing that. <laughs> that was awesome. Like that was I'm really creative. <laughs> it was really creative. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'd cut it anyway. But are yeah, you just... passionately like? No, I'm not passionate. I'm just no. you know. Are you passionately in defense of Pong being underrated? <laughs> I left it alone a little bit because I didn't want to follow Pong up with Tetris, but I was like, don't know about this one. <laughs> um, cool. That was quick. Keith, what's next? Tell me about Parasite Eve. Parasite Eve 2 was awesome. But Parasite Eve was awesome. Parasite Eve 2 was amazing. Um... It was a survival horror game. It, it was coming out around the same time as Resident Evil and Silent Hill games, which is why no one really remembers it, because Resident Evil and Silent Hill are two of the most beloved game franchises of all time. Um, and Parasite Eve 2 was like the the weird cousin who sits in the corner and is antisocial, but if you actually go over and talk to them, it turns out they're actually really secretly awesome. They're just a bit awkward around people. Um, mm. That's Parasite Eve 2. Like, it did a lot of cool stuff, like, that was different for survival horror games at the time. Uh, The biggest one was, instead of finding weapons and armors in the world, you got credits for killing the monsters that were in it, in the game. And you bought them from specific stations, which is something that certain survival horror games, like Resident Evil, kind of took and put into later editions of the game like re4 like that was one of the main mechanics yeah exactly um it was memorable it had really some really memorable moments like there was a fight where you're in the ho- at the end of the hotel section before you moved on to the next section of the game there was a fight with this giant monster and a flamethrower and you're on the balcony and you had to run backwards and forwards on the hotel and fight this monster like f- that was the size of i guess this house <laughs> like it was the size of a house um and yeah, it was just it was really good, and it was a it's it's a forgotten gem, 
of uh, of the PlayStation era. There are many forgotten gems of the PlayStation era because there are a lot of games um, on PlayStation that were probably really good, but drowned out by the by like the beginnings of Final Fantasy and the beginnings of Resident Evil and the beginnings of Silent Hill. Mm -hmm. Becoming like the the becoming the cult classics that we know today. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm just watching the the trailer of it. The playing on um, Metacritic, the auto neo mitochondrion creature infestations. Yep, not quite as catchy as zombies, right? <laughs> yeah, no. But I... it made for some more creative monster designs than zombies and dogs spiders to be fair i mean there is some creativity in resident evil oh, i'm not saying there's not but yeah the in, main enemy in, in parasite in was, Ari, was like some yeah. weird horse thing <laughs> like, yeah. i think you had to dodge past it because it charged you <laughs> i'm just from the hype of velocity gun um i mean it's called a 79 percent on critical reviews, Blimey. 8.8 .8 on peer reviews. Because um, it's a cult classic. Yeah. Uh, released in 2000. Indeed. It's 20 years old. Um, I, I, part of me wants to be like, as it's like yeah, if Parasite Eve disappeared because we got, it was going up against better versions, but of the same genre, but. Um, Obviously, we're talking about underappreciated games here. I mean, um, that, that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It did. <laughs> it went up against games that were, like, it went up against, it's it's like the Mass Effect Andromeda conundrum, which we'll probably talk about at some point, where it's like, it went up against much better games. <laughs> I, 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 was, I, I was thinking t I was about Titanfall. We'll yeah, or probably. Titanfall too. It went up against probably, like, better games, like, uh, Titanfall 2 was slightly different because I don't know if it went up against better games or it just went yeah, up against more popular against games. Bigger games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whereas I think like Parasite Eve 2 just had the unfortunate happenstance of going up against like better games, but also like these games were really popular. Resident Evil was was really popular. Silent Hill was really popular. Yeah. Like it was it was doing that thing where it was trying to to jump into the genre because obviously Resident Evil by two thousand Resident Evil, there's already three Resident Evil games out. Um, mm -hmm. It was trying to jump into that genre. And it did some stuff different, and it was really cool. But for whatever reason, it never truly took off. There are still petitions for it to be a... Remastered. To come back. Yeah. I've just uh, seen the horse creature. Um, yeah. <laughs> so... Yeah, I'm. I'm just. I'm just looking at the list, and it's like we've got five spots, and we've got like ten games. Yeah, we do. Yeah. See, I have actually heard of Parasite Eve. We played it um, on summer. I imagine you were here when me and Russ were playing it at some point. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if it's underappreciated as much as some of the other games on this list. Yeah, we're in that stage now where it's like, yeah. is it as underappreciated as X Y Z? Yeah. Are there f are there five other games that you think would be more? Yeah. I see what you do. I know. I, we've been down this. We've danced this dance twelve times before this. Yeah. I'll leave it. I'll leave it on the list for now. Oh, my games are getting stopped. You're going to give me one hell of a fucking aneurysm. It's like, okay, you cut some of your games. It's like, I don't want you. They're my children. And I love them. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to Words About Games. Sophie's Choice. Um, Something for me to cut now. There's not that many options left. Um, I don't know why I'm trying to Vulcan mind meld myself. <laughs> I've just realized, my like, to my, now, my mind to my mind. Help me, Amy. You're my only I help. Can ever mind more than themselves. Uh, apparently, an android can do it now. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm gonna. Um. Gonna. 
going to go with that. And I'm looking at, at the games that are left on this list that are from your side. There's one I definitely don't want to cut. There's another one I definitely don't want to cut. There's one I'm 50-50 on, which leaves Never Alone. Right. Um, as the I one feel, I would probably go for. I feel I have to explain Never Alone a little because it... I, I did play it. I played a demo of it at EGX yeah. once. A, a mere demo? A mere demo. It didn't grab me that much. Yeah. Um, Never Alone is a game that both me and my brother played and like... Um, it is base. Not be it was not really well received, but um, it is basically a sort of a platformer. Um, and you play as in. Uh, apologies if I get this wrong, but Inuit. Uh, it, it basically it's a story about um Alaska's based on one of Alaska's native stories from native people. Um, and delves very deeply into their sort of um folk or and stuff to create this wonderful um, platform where you are basically a little girl um, who's always getting destroyed and then you've got this little white fox who is occasionally incredibly annoying when he's trying to do jumps and stuff because if either you or the fox dies, you both die. Yes. <laughs> yeah. My, my brother like had many things to say about that fox. <laughs> I made the jump. Why did the fox not make the jump? <laughs> yeah, um, it's just this wonderful little, um, it's a wonderful little pla- like platform story thing. It's an indie game, so it's not, um, like it didn't have quite as much impact as like people getting to know it and stuff. Yeah, uh, so it's up the game and stuff. I mean, I can uh, see why I didn't play it. I can see why I completely fell off my radar. I'm looking at the release win, the release what came out around the same time. Right. Mm-hmm. I can definitely see why I asked, why I missed it. Yeah, it came out on the same day as Dragon Age Inquisition, Far Cry Four, Grand Theft Auto Five on PS4 and Xbox One, Little Big Planet Three, <laughs> a Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. Yeah, those were all on the same day. I was, I like, I looked at it, and I was, that's you probably saw if you were watching the video. You probably saw me just suddenly look at my computer and just go, <laughs> "Yeah." So I, I can see why it got missed. <laughs> up yeah, <there. laughs> yeah. It's it, it's one of those games that like I don't know if it received them in front, of, but it made partnership with um like a Native American uh, community. Sorry, not a Native American, a Native um. Arctic people. The game um, was a result of a partnership between the Cook Inlet Tribal Council and E-Line Media. Yeah. I, it was right in front of me, so I just clicked on it. I think that I think it's Alaska. I'm not 100%, which is why I didn't really want to say Native America. Um, but yeah, um, it's it's it didn't score amazingly well. Um, it's like 6.6. 6 I can see or that. Or 7.3. Um, there were some good, there were some top tier reviews. And then yeah, some tier reviews. It's a great game. It's not a full price, like, you know, triple A game. Oh. But it's one that, as you said, you pretty much pointed out why <laughs> that, on that game. It, 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 it's a beautiful, like, animated game. And it occasionally, as I said, you're like, you're cursed to Fox and stuff, but it's a platformer. You have to expect the fall down and stuff. Okay. <laughs> Fair I mean, enough. how many times did I die in Ori on one specific? <laughs> oh, let's not talk it's too fresh. Um, okay, I, I mean, I can leave it for now if you want, but I have a feeling we'll be revisiting it at some point. Yeah. It's got to start next year. But we're going to have to start making some tough choices. Yeah. Very yeah. soon. Um, hit me with your best shot. Hit me with your best. Child. I was gonna say fire away. Fire away. So, um, I'm not even gonna attempt. Yes. Sorry, to Resident, Evil. Resident Evil Three just got sent out. My apologies. Um, um, I'm not even gonna attempt to cut that game. So I'll go Mass Effect Andromeda. Yeah, there is a game on this list where if you attempt to cut it. I might just end the call. Mass Effect Andromeda. So this is what actually inspired this. So I started doing retrospective reviews, as you might know. Um, 
And my, the first one I did was Apex Legends, where it was like, we've been playing Apex Legends. So then I, then I decided, to, like, I wanted to make a video of it. And then I was like, oh, I'll do this retrospective review thing. And then I was like, what am I going to do next? And I'd always wanted to replay Mass Effect Andromeda away from the shit that surrounded its launch. I mean, we've all been there. <laughs> it got so much hate. It was ridiculous. Um, As was the game at launch. The game at launch was fucked. It meant. was it was it was incredibly buggy. It wasn't game breakingly buggy. It was just it, very very buggy. It was very buggy at each of its many launches. What? <laughs> <laughs> it came out in March 2017. It came out like a week or oh, two weeks beforehand, if you had the EA Access Pass? No, you could play the demo. Don't get me started on that demo. Which it was, was the so first stupid. couple hours of the game. Yeah, they, they cut it off, because we did a preview of it, where I'd played it on the on, on EA Access, and mm-hmm. they cut it off in the worst possible place, where I did the preview, and I was like, I don't think this game's going to be very good, because of X, Y, and Z. And then, full disclosure, EA sent me a review copy of the game on the wrong platform, so I had to play the beginning again, thanks. Um, and, and then like, once you get past that part, the game improves dramatically, like in terms of its story. Um, like I've been replaying it again. Um, but I'm replaying it because I've always been a defender of Mass Effect Andromeda. Um, it's not that bad. It's got a 4.9 user critic score on Metacritic. What the fuck are you guys smoking? (laughs) Like... (laughs) It's actually solid. The writing is pretty good. I'm not going to compare it to Mass Effect 2 and say it's as good a quality as old Mass Effect, as other Mass Effect games because it's not. Right? No. I'm not that crazy. Um, but it's a solid game that people didn't give a chance. And like we were just talking about with Parasite Eve 2, and I mentioned while we were talking about it, it had the un- it was unfortunate enough <laughs> that Mass Effect Andromeda. It was a step back for the franchise, and it came out at the same time, around the same time as Breath of the Wild, Persona 5, Horizon Zero Dawn. So there were these, like, almost generation-defining games that were coming out around Mass Effect Andromeda, which I think, like, if you went and played Horizon or Zelda, and then you went, cool, I'm going to check out Mass Effect now. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) like, I've just played one of the greatest games of the entire console generation. <laughs> and now I've come to this admittedly pretty great game. <laughs> but compared to the experience I've just had, <laughs> like yeah. it's a big step back. But no, I think it gets a lot of un like like I was talking about with CFTs, I think it gets a lot of undeserved shit. That I've tr- I try to disprove that theory while I've been replaying it and think, was I just getting defensive about something about a series that i loved and it's like no it turns out i'm actually a pretty good games games critic and not that was it legitimately what i thought <laughs> from replaying i played like 20 hours of it so far um recently i was like no, no this is definitely still just a pretty good game so what i'm saying is if i continue to cut this i'm saying you're not a good games <laughs> i feel like you need to stop taking these things to illogical extremes <laughs> Because <laughs> I don't think that. <laughs> However, I will keep it on the list in place of Parasite Eve 2. To actually Fair get us to cut a game. <laughs> Fair enough. If you want. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Um, I mean, you've talked to me about uh, Mass Effect Andromeda enough um, for me to know that after they fixed some of the yeah, insane. once you fix some of the bugs. It's still got some technical issues, but they're yeah. kind of baked into the game. It's more Even to do with be- lighting is a yeah. big problem in that game. Even before that, you did say that the writing was solid. It was just the implementation of the graphics. Mm-hmm. The, gameplay, <laughs> the gameplay doesn't hold up as well in 2020, but I think that's more to do with the fact that it's been three years since it came out, and I've played three years worth of third-person combat improvements in video games. Yeah, it's like trying to play the original Uncharted, which I did like a few years ago. It's like this is clunky. 
<laughs> like me going back and playing Alan Wake after I just played Control. Yeah, it's like you can see the, the the vast improvements, and it doesn't make Alan Wake a bad game. It's just still not finished Alan Wake. It becomes, the same yeah, it becomes that little bit more difficult to actually play because it's just not as good as it could like it could it, it could have been if it was made today. Um. Okay. How many have we got left? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Jesus Christ. Um, I don't know if five was enough. <laughs> if five spots was enough. It's like, I need to do that thing now where it's like, okay, I'm taking the bar of where I think it should be and I'm moving it up. So I'm going to be more brutal now. <laughs> with your games and with my games. The problem is there's two games. Got two games left. You've got <laughs> you've got three games left. There's two games in in your list that I want to see in the top five. There's but then there's the third game which I personally don't believe should be in the top five. But I have a feeling I'm gonna fight on my hands to try and get try and get rid of it. <laughs> then I'm looking at what I've got left, and then obviously there's there's the one I've already tried to cut, which I'm not gonna try and cut again. Keith. Battle Chasers Night War is a really good game. I reviewed it when it came out. Yeah. I loved it. So did I. <laughs> did you play it because of my review, or did you get it? Review because of your review. It's like word of mouth. Cool. Um, if I had not read the comics at all. Yeah, no, I hadn't read the comics. I just saw this cool turn-based JRPG-inspired game with a really yeah. cool art style, and I was like, I want to review that. Email, da, 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 da. here's a code, cool, play the game, this is really good. But I don't know necessarily that it was one of the top five most underrated games. No, it's most of one of those games that you just never heard of. Yeah. Like, because I wish more like, people had heard of it and played it. Yeah. I think that's maybe hopefully improved slightly since the game went to Switch. But still. Um, Turn-based games are just perfect for the Switch. Yeah, but it, it, an amazing game with amazing graphics and music was got stuck in my head. Oh yeah, the music was good. The graph, the comic, the comic book art style was incredible. The user score and the Metacritic score are almost identical as well. Mm -hmm. But um, it it did put for me it did for me personally put the developer on the map as well. Where it's like, cool, I'm gonna keep an eye out for games that you make. Uh, ship Syndicate, yeah, yeah Ship I Syndicate. Them to that. I follow so many game devs on Twitter. Um, cool. That there was not as much of a fight as I thought that was going to be. <laughs> no. I was like, uh oh, I wanna... got a problem. <laughs> okay, so let me just click through and we'll just do a quick summary. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We've got eight games left on the list. We've got to try and cut three more. The games that are left over are Anti Chamber, Dragon Force, Mass Effect, and Andromeda. Monster Prom, Never Alone, Sea of Thieves, Spec Ops The Line, and Titanfall 2. And it is Keith's turn to attempt to cut a game. Yeah. See, a lot of these games have got asterisks next to them. Indeed, or should do, do, but don't. Yeah, um, does, no see, there's a, there's a game on this list which I, I, I just know... <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like, the, it's like the red button. It's like no. So that, it's either my own games, cough, or I hit cough, cough. <laughs> um, <laughs> I love how people don't know what I'm doing, and I'm just like I'm literally I'm highlighting yeah. something. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah, I am seeing seeing a little hint from Amy. Um, <laughs> let's go back to the first game I asked you about then. Well, the one we tried. Right, hold on. Okay, there's no phones ringing. <laughs> there's no yeah. grass car outside. We're not going to get interrupted. Everything I said before about Anti Chamber being my favorite puzzle game of all time is true. I think it is a cult classic. I think it did achieve that status. And I, like, I've never introduced the game to someone mm -hmm. and not had them enjoy it. Like, when we used to do before we were live streaming and we used to do charity events where it was just us in a room um playing games for 24 hours and like posting updates and whatnot um 
I I sat people down in front of Antichamber, and it was just like I saw people fall in love with this game, and that's what I'm. One of the things I'm trying to do by talk like when I talk about Antichamber as much as I do is just like you will fall in love with this game if you give it a chance, and it'll run on anything. Like <laughs> it is not a graphically intense game at all. What makes me th- what makes me comfortable cutting it from this list as much as it pains me to do so because it would be in my personal top five underrated games, but this is democracy. Is it has a ninety five percent user review, user review score on Steam, so the people that have played it get it, and we just need more people to play it. It's an underplayed game, which makes it an underappreciated game. But looking at what's left on this list, I feel like there are more underrated games like games that are more underrated than anti-chamber and i gave it the old college try but not everything you want gets into the list sometimes yeah do do you want to try and focus your camera up (laughs) because it's gone i just noticed i don't know how long it's been like that there's an there's a very good possibility that keeps been out of focus for like 20 minutes and i'm just haven't looked at it for 20 minutes. It might have happened when I walked out to take the call. Oh, no, no. You've definitely been in focus since we came back. Uh, it's cool. So, Mighty Chamber's gone. One, two, three, four. Seven games left. So, we need to cut two more. Yeah. I mean, I can go for one of the two games of yours that I haven't talked about, but I feel like it would be disingenuous. But then I could try and do the, 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 force your hand, but then that might backfire <laughs> spectacularly. <laughs> Where you just go, yeah, okay. And it's like, oh no. <laughs> I didn't want this to happen. Oh, oh no. No. <laughs> or we just end up with an asterisk and nothing cut. Um. Oh no. Let's have a look at what I've got left. I mean, I've got four games left. Keith, I propose that we cut Mass Effect and Andromeda. Okay. Cool. That was easy. <laughs> um, I propose we cut Never Alone. Thank you. <laughs> I didn't. I was like, I want to do that one, but I don't want to do that one because I've already done that one. <laughs> cool. So we're into the top five. That is. That was the most seamless entry into the top five I think we've ever had. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, so let me just uh, pop the thing up. So we're into the second phase now. We have five games left. Dragon Force, Monster Prom, Sea of Thieves, Spec Ops The Line, and Titanfall 2. What we are now going to do, right, so let me scroll up, is we're going to populate that list right there. One, two, three, four, five. We're going to start from the bottom. We're going to work our way up to the top. This is slightly different. We're not going to be taking turns nominating things and... Trying to see like if we could get one person to agree to cut the other thing or whatever. Instead, what we're going to do is we're just going to... If we have an idea for a game to go on in at whatever number we're up to, we'll pitch it. The other person can either agree with that pitch or they can disagree. If they disagree, they have to make a counter pitch with a different game. And that's how that works. And the games we have left... Let me just, uh, let me just do this. Dragon Force Monster... Prom, Sea of Thieves. There's some people out there, like... <laughs> the line. Yeah, there's people out. Like, again, don't take this list too seriously. Because <laughs> we're not taking it too seriously. Those are the last five. Yeah. And one, two, three of the, four of them have not been mentioned at all so far. <laughs> it's almost like that always happens. <laughs> Maybe we should change the format of this slightly. <laughs> one of them hasn't been mentioned at all. No, I'd say that's pretty spot on. <laughs> to not so, to be caught, yeah. It's like okay. My my pitch. No, we just we just you, go you on. Always go first the pitch. Because I've always got a thought, and my thought is, Sea of Thieves was good actually, but. It's also the only one out of the four that almost went. And that sounds to me, in this democratically elected top five list, like a number five game to me. Okay. Not in bold. (laughs) 
democracy in action. Mm -hmm. That was the easy part. Yeah. <laughs> now we've got so, to figure out how to order the rest of this. Um, I think everyone now has heard of Titanfall 2, even if it's only from Apex Legends. I feel like everyone who is watching this video has watched at least one other video in on the Words About Games YouTube channel where you or I have mentioned Titanfall 2 because it comes up a lot. <laughs> yeah, Titanfall 2 um, is mentioned by some people to have been the best first-person shooter of this generation. Of the, of the generation, yeah. Um, there are... He's talking about me. There are Penny Arcade comics about this and how people have like missed this in the past. And they've missed it because it was underappreciated by EA. Oh, a big stuff. Arts, the publisher who brought the game out, released it saying for a while that, that it was a marketing ploy to remove games, well, like, remove sales from a competitor's um, first person shooter. To get they released it between Call of Duty and Battlefront. Battlefield. Battlefield, sorry. And then said that they were still committed to the franchise. I think the, it was the producer of the game at the time said, What is that? We've Vince. never seen another Titanfall game. It was Vince Van Pala that said that. Whatever the fuck that means. He's the yeah. guy who runs Respawn Entertainment. Yeah. Um Re Respawn got, in my opinion, a very bad jip out of that deal because Titanfall 2 could have been one of the biggest sellers that year if it had been released. Um, it the game itself a success. If it had been I released know. away from Call of Duty and Battlefield, yeah. it would have um I think it probably would have done a lot better in terms of sales. Because the reception yeah. was all, was outstanding. <clears throat> yeah. Like the people that actually played it yeah. like appreciated it exactly as much as as it needed to be appreciated. Yeah. It was established a week on either side by more well-known games. Yeah. It was the first Titanfall game to come out on the PlayStation because it was on, the original Titanfall was only on Xbox. Yes. Um, so that was an entirely new model. Everyone who had PlayStations, which was the biggest install base of this console generation, didn't know what Titanfall was about. Um... We haven't had a Titan 4 free um, because of the Battle Royale craze. Um, the assets that were going towards that got used in Apex Legends, which is an amazing game, I will admit you. Um, but Respawn has been moved on to other games since then, including uh, Star Wars. Um, uh, yeah. so... Which is also an amazing game. <laughs> Respawn yeah. just dropped banger after banger after yeah. banger. <laughs> Respawn is an amazing, uh, an amazing development stuff at the moment, but it it, it does look further and further away from getting another Titanfall game because it's been quite a few years now. Um, it got 89, um, 86 and 87s over the um, release thing, so it was a well received. Like it's I said, everyone who played it loved it. But... Yeah, just so many people didn't know and get used to it. There are people, this is where Penny Clay come back and wrote, who didn't play it the first time around, who came back to it after uh, Apex Legends came out and like, this is an amazing game. Why did it not come out? That, I encourage you to go and look at the Penny Arcade comics about why it what, what happened there. Yeah. Thousand words. Yeah, it happened there. Yeah. Do, does um, this relate to the, the current friendly debates topic? <laughs> or did you yeah, just, just use this opportunity to be like, God damn it, yeah. Like, are you just going to suddenly pull a like, whiskey bottle out and I, just I, be I, like, I you do. fucking dicks? <laughs> I, I do feel that it wasn't appreciated. Um, because they they were upfront about and saying what they were doing with the game's launch. And I don't think they would have done that if they'd appreciated what they had more. Not saying they didn't appreciate it, I'm just saying in my person my Keith Robinson's humble opinion, it wasn't as appreciated as it should have been. So you wanna put it at number four? <laughs> 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 It's like, I, I, mean, I, mean, I like, agreed. I agreed with everything you said. It's just that at the halfway through, I was like, "Is he getting to a point?" <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure this would actually get in there because it was ridiculously well received when it came out. Yeah, but no one fucking played it to the point where there was a noticeable bump when Apex Legends came out of people playing Titanfall too. 
it's so noticeable. Well, it was newsworthy. <laughs> so I get it. I want to put it higher than that. What yeah, I want, yeah. what I think should go at number four, mm-hmm. um, is probably Monster Prom. Would be my sort of pitch to move Titanfall to a bit further up the list. Um, Monster Prom. We've talked about it multiple times on friendly debates because some, no matter what the topic is. Sometimes the same games just come up over and over again. Um, yeah. It's one of the funniest games I've ever played. It's one of the most replayable games I've ever played. Like, yeah. it has some of the greatest characters. Uh-huh. It's, multi- it, it's, got, it's got great multiplayer. Like, it's got Keith playing it and just making me collapse, wheezing on the floor. Like, I do have that tendency to pick the most bizarre... <laughs> Like, I love it to death, and I wish, like, more and more people had played it, but, like, yeah, I feel like, I feel like it probably sits below the three games that we have left. See, it's on my list, because when I was looking through my Steam library trying to figure, appreciate the games, I was trying to think about the games, I discovered that it's Metascore 73, and it's got 7.2 on, like, normal reviews, but then I looked at some of the reviews, and I was like... What what if Monster Prom had so much potential, so much to offer that I couldn't wait to tear into it. And on a superficial level, it's interesting experiment that I thought I would love. Unfortunately, just like the monsters you're courting, once you get to know it, it's only a great looking show with a fairly rotten inside. And I'm like, what? And some of the reviews are really harsh. And like, what? I mean, someone gave it like a five. Original game idea with size imagery, but then lacks everything. And it's like, <laughs> like it's. It is a limited game, like in terms of like how yeah. it plays and how it works. And they seem to be fixing that for the sequel. Um having looked into what the sequel actually is. So like The like, sequel is nothing like the first one. This is what I'm talking about. So it's like I can see why it might look like I can see why people might say it might like focus on the, the limitations of the game. But at the same time, it's just a just a tremendously fun entertaining game. Like it's, it's just a dating sim, but it's a multiplayer dating sim with such of an insane level of humor that we've used it on live streams before because it's yeah. amazing. It's never going to sit at that level of like the greatest games of all time, but like if I'm looking for for some for some fun with some friends and it's like, oh, what can we play? It's like well, we could play Monster Prom. That's literally a conversation we've had. Yeah, we could play Monster yeah. Prom for a bit. Yeah, let's do it. Da-da-da-da-da-da. And it's like Sea of Thieves. It's like, I've never had a bad time when I play Monster Prom. <laughs> ever. I don't, yeah, ever. Ever, ever, ever. So if you're cool with that, like, that's where I would put that and then move Titanfall up to number three. Yeah. Titanfall 2. So now that we've got the two games that appear on every other Friendly Debates episode out of yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, most people who are watching this will have no idea what one of these games is. It's like, isn't that a band? <laughs> it is a band. So, I mean, I know what I want to put at number one, and I feel like I know what you want to put at number one. Because <laughs> um, one of these games appeared on your list, and one of these games appeared on my list. So who yeah. wants to go first? <laughs> so the two, games, the two games we have left, by the way, are Spec Ops The Line and Dragon and Force. So, I'm sure Spec Ops The Line needs no introduction to anyone watching this. Yeah, we'll give it an introduction anyway. Go ahead, give it an introduction. So, Spec Ops The Line was a third-person shooter that was heavily inspired, not by action movies or action games like every other third-person shooter in the world, but instead by things like Apocalypse Now and Hearts of Darkness. Now... The issue, I'm just going to roll into it. So the issue <laughs> that that has is that for its message to be effective as it's as the game is rolling on, in the beginning part of the, the game, it does kind of need to be a pretty standard third-person shooter. And the problem is a lot of people played it for that first part. And it's like, yeah, it's just a third-person shooter set in Dubai. What's so special about this? Well... If you keep going, let me tell you, <laughs> this game is special because like you can't ruin, you can't ruin the game by like just explaining what it's about. 
in a trailer or like it can't open in a way where it's like it's showing its hand it's like you start off and you're just doing the normal call of duty style stuff it's like oh there's bad guys these are the clearly the obviously the bad guys i must shoot them because that is what i do in a third person shooter and then <laughs> you start having to make some more morally questionable actions but you can just about justify it in terms of the greater good right like you make this one morally questionable decision but you're trying to save the lives of all of the civilians trapped in Dubai after a sandstorm. Like, okay, I can just about live with that. And then it keeps going on a little bit further, and you keep sort of you're on that tra- you're on that path into the like again. It's based on Hearts of Darkness. You're onto that path into darkness, and it's like you slowly slide into it until you do something incredibly unforgivably awful. <laughs> And the game does not hold back in showing you how awful the thing you've just done is, yeah. is to the point where, like, the characters, like, the characters are shouting at each other because there's the three military guys who are on this on this journey, and you're playing as the leader of the squad, voiced by Northern North, of course, and it does a fantastic well. job, and well, um. <laughs> And like, but the way the camera's framed is that the other two characters are shouting at the character in the game, but they're looking at you because <laughs> they're looking directly at the camera because of how the camera's framed in the scenes. And this event only happens halfway through the game. And it's at that point where you keep going through the game and now you're in it. You've got to complete this mission that you've been assigned and it's just getting worse. And the decisions that you're making are getting worse. <laughs> Like and the options that you're being presented with are getting worse, and the video game itself starts asking questions and being a commentary on video games, like and on like the things that you do in the name of quote unquote entertainment, like okay. yeah, you start getting into the loading screens where it's like it's it, in the first hot part of the game, it's just like oh if you push Y, like this will happen, or like it's the general tool tips, and then it's just like you're into the second half of the game, and the game starts asking you questions. <laughs> Do you feel like, Do you a, feel hero like a hero yet? <laughs> like, it is, without a doubt, one of the best shooters of its kind. Well, it's one of the only shooters of its kind. It is one of my favorite shooters because of that. Like, the shooting mechanics are, are all right. Like, they're, they're above average. Like, if you would make, ask me to compare Spec Ops to Titanfall 2... Purely in terms of the shooting mechanics, Titanfall 2 wins hands down. Yeah. It is such a bad game to play in terms of gameplay. But Spec Ops The Line has a message in a way, like, I don't think I've ever seen in a video game before. <laughs> like, it, it's an experience that more people need. But because of how the game was marketed pre-release and how it sets itself up by necessity... A lot of people write it off as just a a bland Call of Duty-esque game. When it's actually the complete opposite. (laughs) The horrors of war have never been depicted so well. Okay. So, the other game is Dragon Force. Which you might not have heard about it because it came out in 1996. On the Sega Saturn, um, which is where I played it. It was re-released four years later for the PlayStation 2. Yes, it was. And And there was a sequel in Japan. There was a sequel in Japan, but Japan only never came to the West. Oh, I'm sorry. It came out in 2005 on the PlayStation 2. Um, So that was quite a few years after. (laughs) Um, It's a real-time strategy, tactical playing game. It was made in Japan, transported to the West... Um, and it has very anime style graphics and was amazing. It was a game that, as we've mentioned on some of our podcasts before, people would, when we do like role playing games or like stuff at ours, sneak away from the table when it was other people's turns or like some other people getting some character stuff done and load it up and try and play as much as possible until it came back around to them. Come back, get that turn done, and then play it because it was a really great game. The graphics weren't great. Um, there was no voice acting as far as I remember. Um, no, I don't think so. Yeah, but it was this 
amazing, this little like strategy game. And I don't think anyone's ever really heard of it because it is old. I mean, the last time this was released was 15 years ago. Um, and even then, that's a, like a re-release from like... I'm just trying to struggle to talk about how many years ago, 1996 was. Nope, nope, don't look at it, don't look at it, don't try to figure it out, don't, don't try to figure it out, no, it's like, shh, that's a long time ago, but it is still got, you know, a warm place in my heart. Oh god, it's still got a warm place in my heart, we did the, we we, we did a, a friendly debate which was the best games of the Sega Saturn, and like, I went into that fully thinking, okay, cool, so Dragon Force is going to be number one. <laughs> yeah. Before we'd even started recording, I was like, alright, you know, Dra Dragon Force yeah. is, is going to be the number one game on Saturn. Yeah. I mean, but yeah, you're right. Like, like, outside of Japan, yeah, it's not well known. No. I'm looking at... It's not on Metacritic. No, it's, it's, it's too old for Metacritic. I've actually got the um, stats that I got when it came out. Um, most of the publications at the time did things out of 10. So Edge... Uh, gave it an 8 out of 10. EGM gave it a 9 out of 10. Game Informer gave it an 8.75 out of 10. Games Master, yeah, was 86%. GameSpot gave it a 9.1 uh, out of 10. It got 4 out of 5 stars in the next generation. <laughs> Don't the know what it was doing in Star Trek, but... Just... <laughs> See, on the converse side, I've just looked it up. Spec Ops The Line for Xbox. Well, no, sorry. For, it had the most reviews on PC. Spec Ops The Line for uh, for, not, uh, for PlayStation 3. Sorry. Ah, my brain. Uh, it got 77, like, as an average. Yeah. Like, I, I'm sorry, but, like, there's very few times where I would say something like this, but if you... If you're not at least impressed by what Spec Ops The Line was doing, you missed the point of that game entirely. I, I am fine with Dragon Force getting the second seed on this. Actually, I was talking about the reviewers who gave it a low score, where it's like, okay, cool, yes, the gameplay isn't great, but... I mean, did you play that game? <laughs> I, had to, I had to lie down after I finished playing that game. <laughs> like, I don't think I played a game for like two weeks. <laughs> Like, after I played that game, so I was just like, I just I haven't got it in me. It was that meme where it's like, you know, you, you, you stand up, like, lie down, kill an ball, cry, and think about the futility of human existence. Kind of, yeah. Sorry, I cut you off there. Did you want to talk more about Track Force? No, really. It's like, it is, Dragon Force was an amazing game, which holds a thing in my heart. Um, there's a uh, meme on Twitter recently, which was post four pictures of games that got you into gaming. Um, oh, yeah, I was meant to do that. The game, how I was meant to do it as well. I was going to find the original image of Command and Conquer on the Sega Saturn, um, the original one, um, Dragon Force, and then I was thinking of what else. It would probably be like Never Winter Night. Um, and probably Walk Rough 3, the sneak. <laughs> like the original. The one original. <laughs> Is there a yeah. difference? Okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> there is the final list. Of our top five underrated games. That's my mouse cursor. Apologies. Um, at number five, we have Sea of Thieves. At number four, we have Monster Prom. At number three, we have Titanfall 2. At number two, we have Dragon Force. And our most underrated game is Spec Ops The Line. Go play all five of those games. You may have to find an emulator to play one of them. Well, need an emulator for a Dragon Force, but the other four are available on PC because they're they're not they're all not that old. <laughs> um, they're all fantastic games. Everything we've talked about today has been a fantastic game. Um, even Pong <laughs> and Terrace. Yeah. Um, that's gonna do it for this friendly debate. We got there in the end. There's some hiccups. Towards yeah. the beginning, you'll see the you'll have seen the cut, <laughs> the jump cuts, uh, already. But it's all good. Thanks for joining me, Keith. We'll try and do another one of these fairly soon. It's it's lockdown season, so we might have some time to maybe put a few of these out. Maybe yeah. in the near future. Say bye, Keith.
Bye.